So today's video is basically going to be going over six simple steps you can do to quickly check your Synology NAS today to figure out, you know, if you're secure enough, you know, are you doing the best practices as possible. Um, so let's dive right into this, you guys. So there are a lot of things you can do, but like I said, I'm going to go over just six of them today. The first one is if you don't need a remote access, disable remote access. The most secure option you can choose is disabling remote access connection features entirely. If you can't access your NAS remotely, then neither can a, a hacker or an attacker. You will lose some conveniences, I agree with that, but if you only work with your NAS at home, streaming Plex from your, your local uh, NAS to your TV, then why not just dis disable remote access entirely if you don't need it on the go? There is that quick connect feature, which I'm going to show you right now. So if you go into quick connect, and this is enabled, and you don't need it, disable it. It's as simple as that. And that will help disable remote access. Now, if you have port forward rules in your firewall, um, and if you don't know about that, then you probably don't have them created. But if you do know you have went in your firewall and created some port forward rules to, for, I don't know, port 80, 443, uh, 5,000, um, Plex servers, I think, 3, 4, 200, um, then, yeah, disable that if you don't need it. Now, you're saying to yourself, well, I really need it, but I stay, I still want to be secure. Well, then, your only other option is to use a VPN service. So I'm going to show you that. So you, to install VPN, you can go to Package Center and simply search in VPN and hit Enter. And here's a VPN server. So I would install uh, the VPN server on your Synology. Use something like OpenVPN because it's the most secure and most open. Of course, that's what it's called, OpenVPN. Uh, install that on the Synology. Then you install an OpenVPN client on your phone, and then you would connect to back to your Synology, and then you can access Plex. You can access shared drives. I mean, you can access all the apps just like you were if you were on your home network. It's just more secure because it encrypts your data from end to end and only you have access to it, so not an attacker can hit a login page or anything. But make sure you do uh, strong passwords. So that's that's one thing to think about. Now the third thing is if you really can't use a VPN, you, need, you still need remote access, you can't disable Quick Connect or anything, then my third thing for you is to secure remote access as much as possible. So to do this, we need to close out of here Let's go to control panel and then go to users. And if you have an admin account and a guest account and they're both enabled or one's enabled, whatever, disable both. And let's create a new admin account. So let's just add, uh, say admin uh, Kevin. And then let's just generate a random password. So this will be our new login then. Because you don't want... Um, a username called admin or administrator or anything like that or a guest account because that's the first thing the attacker is going to guess. So I will give it a random uh, username, even do admin Kevin user, you know, USR for short. So I would create that, give it full admin permissions, and then disable the other accounts. So I hit next, give it everything. And then let's go ahead and disable this other account here, and then we'll log into this new account. Actually, yeah, we need to log into the new account. Of course, it wouldn't let you disable it because you're in that account. <laughs> so let's log in with that admin user, Kevin, and log in. And then once we know we can log in, we can disable that account. So go into the admin and disable account. So that just helps the attacker. Now they got to figure out, okay, crap, you know, admin's not working, guess is not working, you know, what user would it be? You know, they would have to figure out that it's admin Kevin USR, you know, so it's going to be a lot harder for the attacker um, to get in. So the next thing to uh, piggyback off that is now let's go to the advanced tab. This is very important. Minimum password length is six? What? <laughs> Make that like 
16 or more plus. Uh, the more characters, the better. Uh, exclude common passwords. Uh, include special characters. Include uh, numbers in your passwords. Include mixed case or upper and lower case. Uh, password history, I don't really... That's only I would only use that if you enable password expiration. Now, that's good to change your password, I would say, I don't know, every year, every six months. I mean, it just depends on what you think. Um, every 30 days is pretty crazy. Um, for, for I mean, for me, I could not handle that. Um, but in any case, you do what you like. Um, I would enable all these and hit apply. So what this is going to do is if you have current users or... Um, you create a new user account, it's going to force you to do at least a password, you know, 16 characters or more. Um, and to help you with that is just use a password vault. Um, you should have a password vault for everything. Use g generated passwords for everything. And you have one big long password to get access to all that. And make sure you have two-factor authentication on that. And we're going to dive into that as well because that's where my next step is coming. Enforce two-factor authentication. So you definitely want to checkbox this. But before you checkbox this, you need to set up SMTP and email, um, which I'm going to go to home. And let's just go into advanced mode so we can see all of our options here. And then let's go to notifications. And you're going to want to enable this and set up, um, if you have Gmail, uh, Outlook, a custom SMTP server. You know, you want to fill this out because... Um, the security advisor will actually send you an email if it detects like a, a weird login or something like that. So it's good to have those notifications get emailed to you. Um, I know they do SMS and other push notifications. Um, I like email, but that's just my personal preference. So I would definitely have this set up so your NAS can send you emails. And it can send you emails when you get um, more bad, more than like a couple bad sectors on your hard drive. Or if you if it's detecting a drive that's failing, you know, send you an email on that. So of course... You're not logging into your Synology every day to get those little notifications here on the top right. So that's why it's good to have some kind of email server set up for even just checking the health of your Synology drive, not just for security. Now, my next thing is also another important step uh, to prevent against dictionary attacks, a method where an attacker will guess as many passwords as possible um, against your login. So let's say they found out your username. Now they're going to throw like a million passwords at it. So to prevent that from happening, let's go into our control panel. And then we're going to need to go to, I believe it's security. And then go to the account tab. Now by default, the newer technologies will have this automatically enabled, which is great. Um, but some of the older versions, you know, depending on what you were on, might not have this enabled. So e even if you have a brand new Synology, it's good just to double check. So you can see enable auto block. So basically an IP address that tries to hit that login page multiple times remotely or locally. Um, you know, you ha they have 10 attempts. After that, it'll block the account if they do those 10 attempts within five minutes. So I would set that to kind of like 60 and then 10 is fine. Um, now, enable block expiration will remove that block after, you know, how many days. To me, I would probably set this to like half a year or most, 120 days, I think is fair. You don't have to enable that if you just want it to keep blocking. But for, for whatever case, I would just have it unblock after half a year should be more than fine. Um, and enable account protection. This is another good thing. So if it's if they've never logged in before, then it kind of they have a smaller window of time. So I would definitely have that enabled, um, and then apply. The next biggest thing, once you have the auto block on, which is a great thing to have on, the next thing is going to be turning on your Synology firewall. So to do that, is let's go to home. Security, back to security, and then go to firewall, enable firewall. So if you have, if you're running Plex or if you're running, um, you know, a VPN, you do are going to have to allow those certain ports in, but this will help block anything that you don't know about. Um, so it's just one other feature that you want to enable. So enable that, and you get notified if someone's getting blocked, which is nice. So that'll be in the notification area, and then to edit rules. Just simply click edit and then you can create new firewall rules. You can select the uh, app and you can see what port it's running on and just hit 
what you know let's say you were trying to open up these two things hit OK OK and then you can see now it's allowing the TCP traffic on that hit OK so that's how easy it is for that we talked about the two-factor authentication now uh, the last thing that I'm going to tell you is the security advisor this will help drastically so to get to that let's go to our little start button here and then click on security advisor so this is going to scan the entire system look for outdated apps look for outdated uh, your DSM that's running if it's outdated it's going to definitely check for that so let's go ahead and hit scan once that loads up um, now that we made some system changes you definitely want to run the scan again after you make those changes because when you make changes to the um, password, for example, uh, making uh, changes to the password policy, you might have now users that are breaching that policy and then you need to contact them. Hey, you need to change your password. When they log in next time, it's going to force them to change the password. So you can do that as well. So we're rerunning the scan to make sure, like I said, there's not detecting any malware on the system. Make sure the system is fully patched and updated. Make sure all user accounts have strong passwords. Um, make sure all your app pack, all your app packages are up to date, and it's checking you know firewall and other things that are disabled like telnet services. You do not want that enabled. So once we get everything green, we look great. Um, now if you go into advanced, if you change it from home to business, um, the checklist is different. They basically check everything. So you definitely want this is definitely a must you want the automatic reduction from HTTP to HTTPS and what that is going to do is going to, it's going to encrypt your login data everything end to end so you definitely want that enabled now once you enable this <clears throat> you're going to have to add a cert to your Synology so to do that you need to go into control panel then go to security and then go to certificate now there are free ones out there um, I think it's called Let's Inc Crypt, I believe, um, but you can purchase a cert. Yeah, here you go. Get a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Now, of course, to do an actual cert, you need a domain name to forward this to. So if you have like mywebsite.com, you could do nas.mywebsite.com and create an A record and just point it to your NAS. Um, so that's how you can set up an actual cert. And that'll make sure you have a secure HTTP co HTTPS connection and -end, end encryption uh, for your login data and everything. That's very important to have as well. Now, data loss and ransomware encryption is always a possibility with any NAS, especially when it's on the internet, even when you take these precautions. A NAS isn't a backup system. You need to backup that. So what I mean by that is you need to have off-site backups or at the very least plug in a USB hard drive and do local backups or do both. That way, if the worst should happen, whether that's a ransomware attack or multiple hard drive failures, you can restore your data without loss. So, Synology has a really cool app. So let's go to the App Center here. It's always good to have backups. I love having backup, backup, backups. <laughs> so install Hyper Backup. So once you install Hyper Backup, you can do, like I said, offsite cloud backups. You can do local backups to a USB thumb drive. You know, this is very important because a lot of people use Synology NAS as their backup device of their computer. But what happens if the Synology drive fails? Where's your backups then? Or what happens if there's a ransomware attack and they encrypt your local computer and the NAS? You're really screwed because you have no other backups. So that's why you want to install Hyper Backup. It's free app on Synology. Plug in a 12 terabyte, you know, whatever you need drive to your Synology NAS. Do local backups, and then you can also do offsite backups to, you know, Azure or Amazon S3 bucket. Um, you know, just do something. Do something. Well, you guys, I hope this video was helpful. Um, I just want everyone out there to be aware of how vulnerable Synology NASs are if they're not configured properly. I mean, I really hope this helped uh, some people out there to get their Synology NASs secured. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below of this video, and I'll be happy to help. Hope you guys have a great weekend and a great holiday. Thank you.